Our previous center stage features have often profiled well-known figures in the black community. Kamala Harris, Stacey Abrams, and General Colin Powell, to name a few. We also like to use this platform, though, to showcase the careers and work of up-and-coming black folks you likely don't know, but maybe you should. Today, we'll jump into the world of art and introduce you to realism painter O'Neal Scott, who truly creates black magic with a stroke of a brush. With more, here's Anthony Amy. A very driven person so being able to see the work on the wall is kind of pushing me and propelling me to do more and to get better and to see how far I can go with it. Any career that you're doing you need a level of giving back as well as a way to continue to push yourself and feel fulfilled. Being able to leave something here in this world that you've actually are proud of and show that you've done some good within the world is huge. O'Neill Scott has been relentlessly drawing and doodling since he was a kid. It started with Ninja Turtles and Marvel heroes, but the 39-year-old artist is now a rising star in contemporary realism with exhibitions across the globe. Jamaican-born, yet Philadelphia-based, Scott creates an array of paintings with strong black themes rooted in who he is and where he comes from. Every painting has a little bit of a different message, but they're all pulled from, you know, something that I've experienced or something within my past. Um, they usually say every painting is a self-portrait of the artist, <laughs> which is, um, I think, really true within this work. I mean, it varies from diversity to social justice to, you know, environmental issues to the racial undercurrents around food and just how it's like given to certain populations and, and things are targeted a different way. Scott was influenced by the old masters like Da Vinci, Rembrandt, and Michelangelo, plus contemporaries such as Thomas Aikens and Barclay Hendricks. But he is self-taught and constantly consumed with improving his craft. A, you're kind of hopping out of bed wanting to, you know, paint. I think it's always on your mind when you're obsessed with it. His formal education in the arts started at Syracuse, but Scott was also attending the university on a football scholarship. He quickly realized painting and playing just didn't mix, so he changed majors, pursued a degree in IT, and decided to frame a different story. I feel like I can always learn art, I'm always gonna be doing it, and I'm always gonna be able to uh, get back to it in some type of way because it was just a part of me. Um, but I really wanted to play football at that time and I, you know, I had dreams of the NFL and things like that that uh, I think um, you know, a lot of young kids have. And uh, so that's why I decided like, hey, I'm gonna change my major and really focus on football throughout college and um, I'll figure out a way to get back to art. A pro football career never materialized, but Scott's other colorful calling flourished when he picked that brush back up nearly six years ago and fully committed to the canvas. It just always felt like something was missing. And if you become an artist and you wanna get good um, in a certain amount of time, it, it usually it's something that you kind of have no choice but to do. It's almost like a sickness. Like I just don't feel well if I don't do it. Um, I kind of get anxious and just um, don't feel as grounded. Scott sold his first piece for about $6,000 at a Massachusetts gallery in 2017 an oil on canvas portrait depicting his own journey as a man of color trying to become a U.S. citizen. He called it a turning point, one that convinced him to forge on and continue giving a voice to his innermost concerns through the lens of what he knows best, family, friends, and community. The reality is I think it's just people, like people inspire me and you know what they're doing and how they're progressing throughout life. And I think lately it's been around growth and being able to overcome specific circumstances and then pushing yourself to achieve uh, a higher goal. It all stems from people and just finding that inspiration within people. Each piece takes Scott upwards of 200 hours to complete. He's produced about 70 paintings, sold most of them, and is constantly commissioned for more. 
His work illuminates different issues and showcases different subjects, but hopefully elicits one shared experience. For me, it's creating this sense of empathy and allowing folks to have this emotional connection with individuals that are not exactly like them. People fear what they don't understand, right? Or, or what they're not around. So um, being around a diverse group of people now allows you to understand their views and their viewpoints and, and realize that they're not that much of a, a threat to your current state of view or your way of living. Neil Scott joins us now live on Start Your Day. Brother, I said before we came on the air with you, beautiful. Your paintings speak to me. They don't, they're not paintings, they're pictures. They look like they're in 4K first and foremost. Uh, but you recently got commissioned to do a large project for a group in Philadelphia and another one uh, here in Los Angeles where I am. Uh, what are you working on? Absolutely, yeah. I'm working on, oh man, and I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this yet, but I'm working on something for Sony, for the Philadelphia International Records. Um, I'm actually doing a portrait of uh, Patti LaBelle, which is going to be part of their 50th anniversary. So, um, you know, it's going to be exciting. It's a large painting, so I can't wait to get uh, get started and really push through that one. Um, in oh. L.A., I'm actually, and, I, and you probably know this, but in L.A., um, mm -hmm. there's a large uh, homeless population. And, um, oh, you know, I was asked by someone to actually commission a painting around that uh, based on um, shelter and the meaning behind it and, um, you know, kind of how we can move past that and maybe maybe fix that situation out there. So um, so both both projects are pretty exciting. Yeah, they got an issue uh, down in, uh, especially downtown Skid Row area. You're going to get a lot of inspiration from that. And Miss Patty's just going to love it. I'm, I, you should just. Uh, paint her eating one of her uh, famous patty pies or something. That that would just be outstanding. I, know, right? I look, bro. Look, <laughs> she'll love that. I mean, Philadelphia's uh, very own. Uh, look, man, you talk about you pulling your 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 paintings from your own experiences, and, and that's where your inspiration comes from. Your work, man. I just love uh, the the black man wearing the American flag. I just love that. Everything that I'm seeing right now, once again, it resonates and it speaks to me. I'm wondering. As a person and your emotions, have you ever painted something that was super emotional for you where you almost did not even finish it? Mm. Oh man, uh, I think there's quite a few paintings like that. I think um, I painted this one of, uh, you know, this one for charity. It was actually a little boy uh, from Rwanda and um, the charity, mm is uh, called Shooting Touch, and what they do is provide health care through basketball for uh, for the kids in Rwanda. And man, that painting, I think, took a lot out of me. Um, you know, it was for a great cause, and it got auctioned off, and it provided, you know, health care for, I think, 250 kids in Rwanda. But at that time, it was it was definitely one of those paintings that, you know, it was it was tugging at me the whole time. Yeah, yeah, but you're doing it for a great cause. Well, like you said once again, look. So you're you're successful. You're 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 selling your art for a, a probably a, a lot of money. I probably can't afford it right now. Although I'm gonna save my money and, and make sure I get one for a centerpiece when I get a new house here. Uh, but it, it, overall, in, in the black art community, is there still a lot of frustration of trying to be understood, trying to get your work uh, in some of these art exhibits and some of these museums around the country and around the world? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, we're just starting to actually um, hit that point where uh, African American and Black art is being uh, recognized and valued a little bit more. Um, just because of folks, I guess, like Kahende Wiley and um, Amy Sherald and their success, um, I think it's kind of paved the way for us to start getting into these major galleries and um, start exhibiting a lot more and our work is being visualized a lot more. Um, I think right now, um, you know, that's great just because Blacks and African Americans are actually focused on art and have, and they're such a large consumer group. I mean, they, they drive the call. So right now, because we're interested in that as a people, 
I think the rest of the world is becoming a lot more interested in that. So, um, so it's a, it's a little bit easier now for an African-American artist to get into a gallery, but previously, I mean, it was almost impossible. I mean, you always heard the term, you know, black art doesn't sell and things like that. So, Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually shifting right now and it's, it's, it's really exploding and becoming amazing. Yeah, it was what's crazy is we actually had a curator on uh, one of the few black curators uh, talking about that. And with the movement, with the Black Lives Matter movement, they said mm-hmm. that, that now people are starting to have more of an appreciation for black art. Before I go, I understand you got a good story because I, I see this this beautiful uh, little girl uh, in, in your a lot of your paintings. And uh, so I hear you often use your, your daughter, Sydney, I believe, um, and other family members, uh, even your former college roommate. Why is that you, you continue to use them? You know, I think um, it, there's a level of understanding there. Um, you know who they are as people, and uh, you can kind of touch on that. Um, it's a little bit easier because I'm closer to them and I'm around them. So I use my family members and people that I'm close with and kind of, you know, have this connection with because um, I, I'm able to portray that within the work and kind of pull out that emotion. So it's a little bit easier um, uh, when you're closer to them. Yeah. O'Neal, you're brilliant, man. You really are. Uh, We are so happy that we were able to profile you uh, on our center stage today. Thank you for getting up this morning. Thank you for everything that you're doing and uh, continue to uh, to paint the world the way you see it, my brother. And we appreciate you hanging out. Thank you, man. Thank you guys for having me.